energy. We all need it. But where does it come from? How do we get it? How is it passed? And what happens to it after we use it? That's what we're going to be answering today. We've all seen this. A food chain. Plankton gets eaten by little fish, which then gets eaten by bigger fish, and then they get eaten by even bigger fish. There's always a bigger fish. But in reality, an ecosystem is a lot more complex than just a chain. It's more like a web with a lot of different branches, and just like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's all connected. Each organism within an ecosystem has what is known as a niche, or the particular role the organism plays. And all of the interconnected organisms in the ecosystem are within one of four trophic levels. Starting at the base of this pyramid is the most fundamental of the trophic levels the producers. Producers are organisms that obtain their energy through chemistry. In most terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems, this is primarily through a process called photosynthesis. Plants, some bacteria, and algae are all able to use inorganic compounds like carbon dioxide and water use the sun's energy and convert them into organic usable compounds like glucose. These organisms then use that glucose to produce more roots, leaves, fruits, and seeds, which are then consumed by the primary consumers, the herbivores of an ecosystem. Yes, most people think of the very large herbivores as the primary consumers, but zoom in at their feet and there's a whole new tiny world of consumers. These organisms are transferring the energy and nutrients from those producers to build their own tissues. The primary consumers are then themselves eaten by the next step on the trophic level pyramid, the secondary consumers which are organisms that can consume both primary consumers and the producers. Think about mice. They eat seeds, but they also can eat insects and bird eggs, putting them in this level. Other examples are birds, spiders, frogs, and so many others to list. The very top of the pyramid are the tertiary consumers. These are the organisms of an ecosystem that consume anything below them, the apex predators. The only thing that's going to consume a tertiary consumer is another tertiary consumer. If we start with 100% of an ecosystem's energy at the producer level, only around 10% of it is passed to the primary consumers. And only 10% of that is then passed to the secondary level. Then again, only about 10% of that is then passed to the tertiary consumers. The amount of energy flowing through an ecosystem is based on the health and the amount of the producers. The gross primary productivity of an ecosystem is measured by the amount of sunlight and inorganic molecules are converted into energy and usable sugars. Plants generally only capture and convert about 1-2% to of sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface. So we could say a tropical rainforest with large populations and vast diversity of producers will have a higher GPP than say the Arctic tundra thus supporting more life. Energy isn't the only thing that flows or cycles in an ecosystem. Everything in the known universe is made up of atoms, including you and me. We must acquire those atoms of certain elements through our diets, along with all other animals. Those same producers that convert sunlight into usable sugars 
also supply us with those essential nutrients. The plant's root's primary job is to bring up water for photosynthesis, but they also take in things like nitrogen, an element that is biologically important to all life. It is a primary component of chlorophyll, which promotes photosynthesis. The more chlorophyll or leaves a plant has, the more photosynthesis it can undergo, thus the more sugars it can produce. Nitrogen also helps organisms produce nucleic acids, DNA, RNA, and proteins. Most of the air we breathe in is in fact nitrogen gas, around 78%. But we can't use that nitrogen in its gas form. Instead, we need to ingest it along with all other animals. Plants need to obtain theirs through their roots. So just how does nitrogen get from its gaseous state to a usable form? Well, one way, lightning has enough energy to break up the nitrogen gas molecules in the atmosphere and allows them to bond with oxygen forming nitrates, which then dissolves in raindrops and falls when it rains. But that's only a small percentage of how we get our essential nitrogen. Nearly 90% is pulled from the atmosphere into the soil directly by certain kinds of bacteria. These bacteria can utilize the atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into usable form that the plants can use. This process is called nitrogen fixation. Around 18.5% of your mass is made up of one element, and that element is carbon. Carbon is the main element of organic molecules. It has the ability to form long chains forming important molecules like proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. Another important element that we all need is phosphorus, a key component of DNA, RNA, and a molecule we need to survive, ATP. There are so many other elements that we and all other organisms need. Calcium, magnesium, iron, sulfur, and potassium are all essential. These are all the nutrients that flow through an ecosystem. As plants accumulate these elements in their leaves, stems, seeds, and fruits, they are consumed by animals, which accumulate them in their tissues and pass them on to their own predators. But what about the waste products, like feces? Or say an animal doesn't get eaten by another animal and just passes away on its own. Well, that's where another group of organisms comes in, the decomposers. And there are three main types of decomposers that help recycle those essential nutrients back through the ecosystem. Scavengers are animals that feed on carrion, or dead tissue, of other animals. A lot of animals are scavengers. After all, a meal you don't have to chase is an easy meal. Detritivores also feed on dead tissues, but they also eat animal waste. Take the dung beetle, for example. They eat, well, dung. Then the vague term of decomposers. Bacteria fungi, insect larvae, they all feed on substances that aren't really edible for other organisms. They may give you the heebie-jeebies or gross you out, but these organisms are crucial to the health of our ecosystems. Each of the thousands of species in every ecosystem around the world plays a vital role in its health. From the smallest of insects, to the microbes in the soil, to the largest of animals, and even to the towering trees. They all are important to our natural world. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of the importance of nutrient cycling through ecosystems. Until next time, keep learning and keep discovering.